Good morning, everybody. This is Gil, and this is Pro Wrestling Today. So I want to talk a little bit about AEW and what happened and uh, uh, with their all-out show. As everybody knows, uh, CM Punk has been fired, and now uh, on a daily basis, more rumors uh, are coming out about confrontations that he had with different people. He even, according to uh, a recent excuse me, a recent report had um, interactions that uh, a backstage altercation with William Regal. So that's another thing that's come out uh, recently. Don't know how true it is, but I'm sure more information will come out as we go. Um, so AEW's, uh, that all-out pay-per-view was not very good in my opinion, but there were some great uh, performances. Um, and uh, as I look at the articles online, a lot of people are saying the same thing that I did, like... Uh, uh, John Moxley stepped up. Orange Cassidy stepped up. Brian Danielson's return to the ring was great with Ricky Starks. The intensity that Brian Daniels brings is like second to none. Uh, Kenny Omega and uh, and Takashita, Miro and Powerhouse Hobbs. That was a hell of a match that the people gave a, a standing ovation to. Um, I always knew Miro was was freaking great. Uh, Powerhouse Hobbs, if he just listens or somebody leads him the way he would he needs to be, could. He showed me he could be their uh, their one bright spot black star that's on. Now, Swerve Strickland's the other one. Uh, but if you need to look at black uh, professional wrestlers in AEW, Powerhouse Hobbs uh, is definitely setting himself up to be the premier uh, black pro wrestler in AEW. And uh, along with Swerve Strickland. Um, and you put Prince Nana with the, with those, man, that would be a hell of a uh, thing. But anyway, so AEW, uh, they lost CM Punk when he was fired on Saturday. Um, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, their goal on Sunday was to find somebody to take up the void, another star that could take up the void because they put so much in the CM Punk basket. So Chicago was his hometown. Um, was there a loss of uh, of revenue from CM Punk not being there? I don't know. I really don't know. The crowd looked like they were into it. Um, there were a lot of people there. Um, but, you know, uh, I always said Orange Cassidy, even though that stupid gimmick of putting his hands in the pocket, the little bitty kicks, every now and then it's okay. But the guy can work. He can go at it. So uh, he was in a spectacular uh, fight against John Moxley. He lost to Moxley, but it did more for him than any kind of victory he could have had as the champion. Uh, he showed an entirely different uh, perspective on himself while dripping in blood. And there was a chance to see someone attempt to break through to the next level. Um, it's it's hard to do, especially in AEW, if you weren't established, because the elite aren't just going to let you come in there. But, um, I mean, the guy did it, man. He put on a fucking performance. Um, Moxley put the company on his back. Um, I don't like the fact that he's bleeding in every match, but I mean, he has definitely stepped up many times um, into the main event when they were needed. Uh, Punk was injured last year. Moxley became the new champion, helped elevate MJF to the point where uh, when he dropped the belt to him, MJF was a star. So uh, Moxley took, went into All Out, closed out the show with a physical, memorable match. And uh, this will be his first run as international champion. I hate all those titles in AEW because they mean absolutely fucking nothing. There's about 10 titles that I can basically ramble off that they are always putting on their shows. And I don't know. But some people thought All Out was a fantastic show. I thought it was okay. Um, it was a massive night for the company, however, especially considering the build that uh, was so weak. They didn't put a lot of time into it. So it was a kind of hard to um, ask for people to put pony up that amount of money two weeks in a row for a pay-per-view. Um, many of the matchups that were on the show were rushed. Um, they were. So Brian Danielson and Ricky Starks, the eight-man tag with the Young Bucks and FTR against Bullet Club, Gold, and Kenny Omega um, against Takashita. Uh, those were all good matches. Samoa Joe emerged as MGF's newest threat for the world title. Uh, this card was also reminded that there's a star power already a part of AEW's roster. And it was illustrated in an authoritative manner during a fantastic match between Miro and Powerhouse Hobbs. And that was freaking fantastic. 
I believe, however, if they get rid of fucking the acclaimed, because I hate them, and I definitely hate fucking uh, Billy Gunn acting the ass with all these young guys with the scissor me daddy bullshit. But here are the results from uh, All Out. MGF and Adam Cole defeated the Dark Orders, Alex Reynolds and John Silva. Uh, TV champion for ROH, Samoa Joe defeated Shane Taylor by submission. TNT champion Luchasaurus defeated Darby Allin. Miro defeated Powerhouse Hobbs by submission. The TBS champion Chris Statlander defeated uh, Ruby Soho. Uh, Chris Statlander's good. Ruby Soho's good. The match left a lot to be desired, especially the ending. But the ending kind of made sense. Um... I don't like their women's division. Um, they have no friggin' real superstar worker. Um, uh, Britt Baker is not good. Not at all. Not even close. The best worker on their roster to me is Tony Storm. I mean, she is probably their best. But anyway, we can go on. That's another episode completely. Uh, Brian Danielson defeated Ricky Starks in a strap match. Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta defeated Katsuyora Shibata and Eddie Kingston. Takashita defeated Kenny Omega in a match that was really good. And Kenny Omega did the right thing, which I can't believe. Um, but the good thing about that is it extends the, the, the rivalry and extends the feud that can make more money. This could be a draw uh, real soon. Bullet Club, Club Gold uh, defeated FTR and the Young Bucks in an eight-man tag. That was the right thing to do. FTR and Young Bucks put over Bullet Club Gold. Uh, they're fucking fantastic. Jay White and fucking um, uh, Juice or some fucking... They, they can go, bro. That's fucking tag teams. They are good. Then John Moxley defeated Orange Cassidy to become the new international champion. Uh, MJF and Adam Cole opened the show. Uh, the storyline of, of that was built around MJF suffering a neck injury that removed him from the match. Cole struggled when he was outnumbered, but MJF came back and led the team to victory. All pretty good stuff by those guys. Um, I really do like the MJF thing. Um, I think it's fucking awesome. However, um, that's just leading them closer and closer and closer to... Um, a turn that's going to cause some damage in the uh, division. So Samoa Joe then beat Shane Taylor. Um, Jay Lethal has a record for the Ring of Iron Television uh, Championship. It's 567 days. Joe is now at 509 days. And he is also the next challenger for MJF's world title. So, uh, you know, I, I think we're looking at a, a, a really good um series of matches i do not believe mjf can keep up with samoa joe the only thing that i can say is joe knows how to lead a match and do it properly um so that would be really fun to watch eventually um so whatever it doesn't matter but, but I, I like the, where that's going also um Miro, Miro and Powerhouse Hobbs. That match exceeded all expectations. Served as a reminder that both Miro and Hobbs should be playing more significant roles for AEW. Miro won by submission, only be attacked by Hobbs after the bell. That lead to the return of his wife, Lana, who diverted Hobbs' attention and allowed Miro to overpower him. Uh, Miro left without embracing his wife. I don't know what, the, what that means because out of his mouth he said, you're not real. So, you know, Miro, uh, it further... Uh, brings along the fact that he's kind of losing it uh, mentally. Uh, you know, he doesn't believe in God anymore or whatever. So maybe he thinks Lana is an apparition. Who knows? But Mira's best work was always beside her. That is a fact. And perhaps she is the missing ingredient for him to finally enter the world title picture. I love bringing Lana. I said two weeks ago that that's something they should have done. Put her back in those business suits with the skirt. And you got a fucking winning combination, brother. Winning combination. Statlander defeated Ruby Soho. Didn't like that match. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. The finish saw Tony Storm cost Soho the match, extending Statlander's reign. I hate the fact that it looks like they're going to break up uh, that team. Uh, the Outcast, which I love. Really love it. Um, so... Um, Ricky Steamboat was on commentary for the next match with Brian Danielson and Ricky Starks. Um, Danielson bled right before the bell even started ringing. Starks played the role of the heel well. Um, they had Ricky Steamboat, like I said, on commentary. He got involved uh, to thwart the outside interference from Big Bill. Um, 
You know, Steamboat was also in the corner of Tony Khan. Steamboat spoke in Khan's office to roughly half a dozen staff members about how Khan's pre-show speech before Collision was a real feat considering he turned booze into cheers. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, Punk hasn't done himself any, 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 any good at all. Um, Danielson uh, chokes out Ricky Starks, which was, it was a decent match, but I mean, I don't know, but whatever. Um, so you go on a little further. You got Eddie Kingston and uh, Shibata uh, losing to Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta. So they were closing uh, uh, Castagnoli and Yuta. Uh, they, I mean, Castagnoli, of course, is a fucking beast. Yuta really turned into a great worker. Kingston is garbage. Shibata used to be um, a fucking top guy. Like, okay, so Kenny Omega then wrestled. Uh, Takashita to um, a what people are considering a masterpiece. This was exactly what Takashita needed to reach that Lucifer's next level of stardom. Um, the match made sense. Omega repeatedly kicked out of pinfalls, featuring Takashita's best offense, showing his heart and grit. But despite repeated attempts, Omega could not hit the one wing angel, and the loss adds more fuel to the story that he is not the same competitor without Don Callis in his corner. That is a good angle that they can come up with, that they can keep going. Um, I like that. It's uh, but Takashita's on his way to like fucking superstar him, dude. Uh, the Young Bucks in FTR um, against Bullet Club, Jay White, Juice Robinson, and Austin and Colton Gunn. I like the guns. They're getting so much fucking better. I mean, it's incredible. Um, so they worked really well together. Um, you know, everybody did a really good job. Uh, but White Robinson and the guns. Uh, that was a highlight performance for them, which is acceptable because uh, that's a good faction. Now they just need a manager to come in. That'd be the new version of the Four Horsemen. In the main event, Orange Cassidy worked a match that could be his breakthrough moment. Cassidy reached a new level of violence against John Moxley. One of the highlights took place when Cassidy popped up his shoulder uh, during a pinfall attempt after a death rider, showing his heart and refused to quit. But Moxley was too much winning the match with an exceptional dream rider. Uh, Moxley winning is important. He would now attempt to bring prestige and notoriety to the largely forgotten international title. Um, fucking Cassidy did a fucking great job of having that title. And him opening the show every week has become um, a moment you want to see. So I, I keep, they've been in a, keep him in the opening fucking match keep that shit growing because he's really uh turned into a good worker i hate him with those fucking idiots uh best friends but god damn uh, get rid of best friends and you're okay or get rid of chuck taylor not the other guy okay so all in all out according to many people was a statement for AEW. uh punk is a legitimate superstar they lost him it hurts but the promotion is loaded with talent um now they have to harness all this momentum uh for dynamite and see what happens then but i like what's happening the only problem with all out with um aew is very very simple you have the elite which are fucking garbage all right their attitudes you tony clown would talk Khan would never be able to manage effectively or put someone in a position to manage effectively when you have those guys around and the most important thing is they do not build angles properly uh for them an angle in a feud is a week and that is just not good. Um, on the independent level, a guy by the name of Mustang Mike and I, we built an angle for uh, two and a half years. And we sold out the Morgan City Auditorium, 1,200 people for a cage match. We took two and a half years. And we built it around multiple promotions. And we sold out an arena. It can be done. We did it. My proudest moment, that was last year uh, when I did that. I was the heel a week before I broke my arm in a motorcycle wreck. I broke my my arm, my nose, my arm in four places, my nose and fractured my eye socket a week before the match. Um, I didn't get surgery on my arm until the following week. So they put a, uh, they wrapped me up uh, so I can get through the match. The doctor did. He helped me because we could, I couldn't back out. Everybody knew I got in that accident, but I had to work that show because there was no way to pull out. We sold those tickets. That would ruin wrestling. Uh, but we 
But long story short, it would ruin wrestling in the state of Louisiana if for two and a half years we built this and they paid those ticket prices for a show, a cage match in the biggest event in Louisiana in a long time. Um, I felt there was no need to pull out. We worked the match. It went great. It was a very good match. And we got it where it needed to be. But what I'm saying is, long story short, is um, uh, AEW needs to build angles. That is the way of the business. That's how you do it. I The, the, the blueprint is established by the greats of the past. Uh, we've taken that on an independent level and made it work. They can do it because they've got television. And it's not hard. It is not fucking hard. So this is Gil. Thanks for listening to Pro Wrestling Today. Um, I'll have more stuff later on today, but this is Gil. Thank you for listening. Uh, We'll talk to you next time. Later.